Now, I want to show you this guy called uh, Jizkiao Ben David. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce his name. But um, his original name is uh, Rav Shlomo Yehuda. Okay? So, I want to read for you his biography so that you can be able to understand who is this guy that people are looking for after and uh, people are really thinking that is the messiah i don't know if he's the messiah for the jews you know or is you know i i, I can't really tell i'm just putting this out there so that um, you can be able to understand this guy and you can see does he really have the qualities of becoming uh the antichrist you know most christians are looking on this because uh, the bible tells us in the book of uh, second thessalonians uh, chapter 2 i think it's from verse uh, from verse 3 it talks about when this guy he'll be revealed then that's when we'll be living okay so the bible says do not worry do not fear until that day when he will be revealed will we will see him let me just show you this huh? I, I don't want to I had to speak my own things. Uh, let me just show you that verse first before I go there so that you can see who will be revealed, okay? When he's revealed, then probably will be out of here. Let me show you, let me show you, let me show you. This is a Second Thessalonians um, from chapter 2, verse, I think it's verse 2. Let me show you this so that I can build um, a good foundation when I'm just about to show you what I'm I uh, want to show now. Now, in verse 3, it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Okay? People falling away from grace and falling away, from, you know, from what they once believed and things like that. That's what I believe. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worship. So he is God seated in the temple of God. Okay. Did, did you see something like that? I know. I know. Ben David sitting at the temple. Uh, it really raised eyebrows of so many people. Showing himself that is God. Did you see people kissing his hands? Okay. Now <laughs> let's, let's go back here. So what Christians are looking for is because of this one word here. Which is being talked about here. Which is when he'll be revealed okay so has he been revealed um, i cannot say yes or no i don't know i'm just putting this out there so that we can be able to see so the bible tells us that uh, the, the the false messiah i mean the false christ who will be coming the antichrist he will be you know he will come to make peace between uh, the the jews and um, the Jews and uh, the Arab countries, and also he will come from the from from the European nations. That's that's basically what the Bible is talking about. I don't want to get into details. And also, he will be a really smart guy who will be able to deceive the whole world. With you know, he, he definitely has to be a smart guy. Okay, he has to be smart guy. And uh, what we are hearing from this. Um, uh, ben David, this guy who has been talked here so much, uh, is that uh, he's also 30 years. <laughs> Does that also make some sense? He, he's the same age like when Jesus was starting his ministry. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just putting out this out there so that people can be able to see. Now, let's see his history and uh, how he is like. So, there's a little story here, but I want to go to exactly who he is, okay? Now, this guy... His story is here. Rav Shlomo Yehuda, okay, this is the Ben David that they are talking about. This is his real name, okay? So if you're looking for his real name, this is, he's called Rav Shlomo Yehuda. Um, was born in Eretz, Israel, okay, Israel, in 1988. <laughs> if you usually watch uh, Shaking My Head's productions, just go and see why this 88 is a very significant number when it comes to, you know, uh, cracking the codes concerning the end times. Just go to Shaking My Head's production and see his documentaries when he's talking about the number 88. I'm just putting this one out there so that people can be able to see. He's an only child born after many years. Okay, you see there's uh, some kind of <laughs> seeming miracle here. 
the only child after many years. <laughs> okay, his pa paternal grandfather, Rav Shlomo, was a scion of the sages of Yemen and a land with great Mekobilim. Um, uh, you'll forgive me, I don't know much pronunciations of these words, eh? of uh, Jerusalem after he arrived in the Holy Land. His maternal grandfather, Rav Yehuda, made Aliyah. You know, Aliyah is what? Coming out, coming out from uh, 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 different countries into Israel. He made Aliyah from Aleppo, Syria. Now, this one already tells us that this guy, he's uh, somehow halfway... <laughs> Uh, is one guy who can really unite the, the 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 Jews with the neighboring countries, the 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 Islamic countries. You see, he made Aliyah from Aleppo, Syria. Okay, and also it's being said also that uh, he's half Jewish and half Islam. I don't know from where. So this one looks like a candidate. Let's keep on checking. It is said that his pious grandmother, Naomi, Rav Shlomo's wife, poured out copious tefillos to merit a grandson. Forgive me for my pronunciation. When he was born, he was overjoyed. Does this look like what, uh, uh, what is it called? When John the Baptist was being born, eh? the mother, you know, the mother said, w w when the mother went to visit uh, Mary, is it Mary who went to visit my, my, the mother of John the Baptist? Okay, we, whichever you know the story, and uh, she, the baby was overjoyed in the in the tummy, <laughs> okay, and things like that, and also them they were overjoyed. That that this also seems something similar. Uh, I'm just putting it out there. When he, she, he was born, she was overjoyed and realizing this child was destined for greatness, she would warn. Guard the child and make sure that his head covering never comes off for a moment. Savta Naomi naturally assumed that this grandson would be named for her husband. After he passed away, she saved all her money and built a shun in his memory. I prayed for this grandson, she said. I want his name to be Shlomo. But his mother wanted the, the, the boy for her own father, Rav Yehuda. In the end, a compromise was reached, Shlomo Yehuda. And to this day, Rav Shlomo Yehuda sees one of the missions of his life as bringing peace. <laughs> Look at that. Bringing peace where? Between the people. Are you seeing? Are you looking at this guy? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to be, I, I don't want tomorrow to, uh, stones to be thrown on me and uh, being told, Keith, you, you, you. You're setting things. You're saying this is the Antichrist. You're saying this is the day of the rapture. You're saying this and that. No, I don't want uh, stones to be thrown on me. But whosoever has eyes, he better be watching. Okay. In our conversation, Rav Shlomo Yehuda described the poverty that accompanied him as a child. Now, who else was born poor? You remember that Jesus came as a poor, poor, poor guy? He was just a, a, a carpenter. His father was a carpenter. So is this guy trying to be poor? Although he showed up in a limousine in that day when he was, being, um, when he was uh, coming to the temple mount. So I don't know. I don't know. Keep on checking. Let me show you. His father suffered from various ailments related to an injury which prevented him from working. But the one comfort amid his suffering was seeing his children learning diligently. In fact, sh a little Shlomo Yehuda would cry his eyes out when he'd, he'd read about Trazikdim or whatever, feeling a strong desire to connect to and understand the depth of their writings. When he asked where he had, when his act where he had acquired such sensitivity, he'll say, do you think the Tainam and the Amoraim learned the Torah just to know and remember it? They learned the Torah with tears in their eyes, never missing the slightest detail or deviating an iota from the divine will. Mm-hmm. Another word there that we must uh, be checking out. Now, let me continue here. Mm -hmm. Shlomo Yehuda grasped this concept when he barely, when he barely out of diapers. This guy became so smart even when he was still in diapers. So, he was smart when he was a young boy. Who else was a smart guy when he was still young? Remember Jesus as 12 years? He was already preaching to the 
to uh, uh, preaching to, uh, to 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 older men in the synagogues and telling them about you know his mission when he was still young is this guy trying to copycat jesus the family moved often during his childhood now look at the places where they went uh, to to spain switzerland germany returning imminent immediately to israel but whenever they uh, wherever they were in Jerusalem, Zurich, Berlin, or Barcelona. These are European nations. So this guy is coming from the European nations just the same way the Antichrist has been spoken about that he will come from the... Should I call it the League of Nations? I, 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 I don't want to put words that I don't understand. But I know he will come from somewhere in Europe, okay? Shlomo Yehuda sought out the base madrasa Medrash, its four walls, the firm ground in his life. I don't know what that means. His usual childhood, he relates, compelled him to get used to a complicated reality. From the time he was four years old, he lived in foreign countries, okay, where he didn't know the language and his Sephorim were only his friends. His mother would prepare him a box full of... Uh, a cut of fruit which would sustain the little boy for the long day he'd spend in the local shul. I don't know what shul means. Uh, if you know, probably you can comment there, we can know. But how does such a small child experience such lofty thoughts and practices? You see, this guy was wise. He's wise, very, very wise. Difficulties in life brings a person into introspection. Rav Shlomo says, for me, it was a result of the distress, the difficulty, the poverty. A guy who comes uh, driving in um, a limousine, now uh, he wants to portray that he's, uh, you know, he's, uh, <laughs> he's poor. I don't know, I don't know, because, you know, some, some of the Bible characters, they're always poor. <laughs> The troubles, but since I can remember, even at the age of three or four, I would tear up at the sky, at the stars. Today, I still do that. I make sure I'm always next to a window. When you look down or behind, you can fall. But looking up, that will always bring a person to see that he's living for something higher. So this guy, he is uh, living for something higher. Is it a greater calling? Is there something that uh, he'll be doing in some time? Is there some job that he has to do? Okay, time will tell. The family returned to re uh, Israel shortly before Shlomo Yehuda Bar Mitzvah. At the time, there was a memorial event or a relative. The family was looking for someone to say words of Torah in honor of the deceased. His father asked him to speak before they assembled and he agreed out of respect. Now listen to this. But even his father had no idea of the depth of Torah that would pour forth from the, his young Alui. As Shlomo Yehuda lowered his head and sought the right words, the thin stream quickly grew into a powerful waterfall. People were astonished, okay? As if they were watching a child possessed, you see? They are looking at a child who is so knowledgeable, they are wondering, is he possessed of something? The voice was small and innocent, but the words were those of an accomplished Talmin Chacham, a tree of Chumash and Navi. Oh, these words are really hard. Gemada and Agada. Every source accurately cited. His father sat in a corner of the shul and covered his face, face to conceal the tears rolling down his cheeks. So it means this, this child was a miracle boy. He was really a miracle child. From that point on, he was asked to deliver Divrei Torah on a various occasions. By the age of 14, he was already giving Jemana Shur to adults. I don't know what this means. The Shiruim were remarkable and that... And that was when the term Yanuka, Yanuka means the wise one, I, I believe, if I'm not wrong, was bestowed on him. For he, for he was a gaon in Torah whose tremendous breadth of knowledge bellied be, his young age. Another aspect of Rav Shlomo emerged that, uh, at that time as well, his special connection to the world of music. Now, talking about music, who else was the, you know, the head of music in heaven? 
You understand that? You remember Lucifer was heading music in heaven? And uh, most of the artists today that we see, musicians today, they have all sold their souls to the devil because they want to be stars in music. I'm, I'm not saying anything here. Don't blame me. Don't uh, start saying Keith gave a prediction of something. I'm just putting the word out, out there in uh, coloration to what the Bible says so that you can do your own research. Okay. One day, one day, uh, I just felt my camera. Let me put it back again. I hope you can see me. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Now, let me show you. One day, he heard through a window the sound of music from someone playing a grand piano. One of his Talmidim relates the sounds captivated him and he felt a deep urge to learn how to play. He prayed that he should be Zochesh. Zot Somehow his parents managed to acquire a cheap keyboard for him in just three hours. Look at this child learning a keyboard in three hours. He figured out how to play a few tunes. Three hours, he already knew how to play something. So, so guys, th this, this, I'm just putting it out there so that you can understand. Let me just read a little bit more. Rav Shlomo Yehuda even composed a telfila about music. Ben Zahau, please grant me the merit to feel the holiness of pure music. What is, who is Vesikianau? Vesakainu? I don't know who is that. Please, if you know, you can tell us what that means. Vesakainu, please, grant me the merit to feel the holiness of pure music. So this guy, Vesekahayanu, is the one who is granting this guy the holiness of pure music. And may holy Nigunim play inside me. That should awaken me and cly Israel to you. Yibatak Shimnya. Hey. Guys, I don't know what this means. To this day, every Torah sure he gives concludes with a short musical interlude. Sometimes he's just singing, but often someone brings a keyboard to his seat and the front table and the Yanuka bling brings begins to play. He plays both his own compositions and classic tunes. Let me read the final place here. Music connects to a, pers a person to his uh, true souls, he says. When a person doesn't play or sing, and uh, in general, when he's not connected to music, he's lacking an important component in Avozad Hashem. When a person doesn't dance or isn't happy or doesn't like music, he's hiding from himself. Music can reveal the inner essence of a person and bring it to truth. So now, I think you guys have been able to see all this story. There, there is uh, so much more. I don't want to read all these. Eh? I will just link the article down on the description below so that you can be able to see. This new um, Messiah, Moshiach, Messiah, as uh, some are saying, others are saying, no, he's not the Messiah. He's just uh, maybe the false prophet. Others are saying, no, he's just a wise guy out there. He's one of the, you know, he's just one of the guys. I don't know who he is. Maybe... If he's the Messiah to the Jews or he's, uh, he's uh, not the Messiah to the Jews or he's uh, something else, it, just do your research. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. You know, study, study, studying. We have to study. Yeah? 2 Timothy 2.15, it tells us to study. So we have to study and know. And I'm also hearing that uh, they are saying that uh, during uh, Pentecost that uh, there's someone else who will be revealed. Ben Ben Yosef, <laughs> I don't know. There's Ben Ben David, and there is also Ben Yosef will be being uh, who will also be revealed. Could it be there Elijah, who they say probably Elijah will be revealed at some point? Could it be maybe now the false prophet is coming? I don't know. I don't know. So you guys uh, just uh, do your own research. I'll put this at the description below. And if you want to be saved, please, guys, this is the time that you cannot play with your life. This is the time that you need to be saved. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about that, how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If you believe the death of Jesus was for you, his blood that he shed was to atone for your sins. My brothers, my sisters, you will be saved, okay? You will be saved. Okay, so have a blessed time. Hope this has been a blessing to you. You can also enlighten others out there who are still mixed up. God bless you.